this is now on the legacy, on the watch of Terry yeah. Fontenot. It's, it's, we turn the page. But now I want to see how he maneuvers these nine picks this year. This draft is the marker of what direction this organization is going to go in. This is a new era of Falcons football. This is a new page in the organization's story with this new front office and with this new coaching staff. A coach and a GM going into their second year, the draft, it is the foundation of where your team is built. It's unlike any time of the year. The process is so long and it's so methodical and it requires so many pages of reports. It's a true organizational team effort. Everybody feels a part of this thing because there's an opportunity to make your team better and better in a hurry. I love this time of year. If you get it right, and we know this, you can change your franchise immediately. Overnight, you can become a different team if you get the right guys. After the 2021 season, the NFL draft really starts in Mobile with the Reese's Senior Bowl. Um, front offices are there, most teams, entire personnel, player personnel departments are there to see these guys. And it's the first time that scouts get a chance to talk to players. This is an opportunity for a lot of these coaches and, and GMs and, and personnel people to actually sit down and talk to these guys and get to know these guys a little bit more than they do just on what's on, written on paper or what they see on tapes. Important moments for some of these kids as they try to extend their careers. When you're evaluating players, you can't just, you're never just going to look at production and bring in the most productive players, right? We're looking at traits. As we sit here at the Senior Bowl, I actually like to watch from the top and I have my iPad right in front of me and I can look up stuff and he likes to get right up close and, and really see him and so he's down there in the rain because he wants to be close to the players and that's a part of his process. So that's important. That's how passionate he is about the evaluation process and that's special when you have that. The coaches, the GM, the scouts, they descend on these practices and they devour that practice tape one, two, three, four times over and over again and they get to meet with everybody. It's a real opportunity to find guys that can stand out, who may not be the juniors coming out, but are guys that have earned the right to have the spotlight shined on them for one week in Mobile. Well, right when we leave here, the scouts are coming in on uh, Monday and we start our meetings all day you know, every day and starting on the draft. Um, setting that preliminary board, getting the names up there, going through the background, the character, the makeup, uh, the evals, um, talking it out uh, for the first week and then watching the tape. The February meetings are very important because it's just the scouts. Each area scout, the national scouts, the over-the-top guys, they can go through their area and, and go by position. And, and when there's a lot of passion on a player, you really feel it in that room, but it's all just based off football. That's what February meetings are, is just, just, we always talk about paint the picture, you know, whether it's talking about the, the character of the player or it's talking about the tape. You know, I should be able to shut my eyes and listen to you talk and, and get a feel for the guy. We gotta find, make sure that we got the right fit for us. And so the scouts do a tremendous job. They've got a lot of the background. Obviously, they've watched years of tape. We get caught up, we give our opinion. But at the end of the day, like we're saying, here's how we coach this guy, here's how he would fit. And then you got to rely on the scouts that have done all the background checks to make sure that you're not, there's nothing that you're missing. We want to know more about less as opposed to less about more. So we don't want to board with 400 players up there. We want to board with 150 players. And I'm just throwing numbers out there. It can be 125. We're going to narrow it down to the players that fit us. It's busy when the football fields are quiet. In February, you get all the scouts who don't all live in Atlanta. They live across the country, right? They all come home, and it's a chance where you can be open and free with your opinion. It's everyone's involved, and, and everyone has a voice, and everyone, we don't want groupthink, we don't want everyone to agree, we want everybody to have their opinions, and the opinions are based off of real research, uh, a, a lot of film, a lot of gathering information. For us, the coaches, is we're, you know, we're kind of late to the party, so it's, we talk about collaborative. I mean, the scouts have put years of work and, and getting to know the player. Obviously, we come in after the season, and I try not to make snap judgments. So I like to watch the tape to start out without reading the reports or, or creating any kind of bias. And then there's constant conversations. It's important not for the Falcons just to make a Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith decision. It's about a Falcons decision, and that's when those Falcons decisions uh, really start to be made.
What's coming next is the combine. You start to actually see some of these players that we've been talking about. Again, this is where the evaluations come into play. We're excited to be here at the combine, and this is an important exposure. We went through a very productive round of February meetings, and now we get into this part of the process. And I know different people see the combine different ways, but this is a very important exposure for us. Any touch point with the players that we can have is, is critical. If you handle this week the right way, it can be very productive. So uh, we're excited about being here. It's a big puzzle. The draft, free agents, everything's a puzzle. And every part of the process is a piece of that puzzle. So in the combine, interviews, workouts, numbers, you know, uh, their body types, all that stuff is extremely important. They're trying to get measurable tangible numbers that you can compare, comparative statistics. How far can this person jump? How far can, how fast can this person run? In less 40s, how, how fast can an offensive lineman go 10 yards? How, how, how agile is a wide receiver? How accurate is that quarterback? And you see it on those workouts, and that's important. Woo-hoo! Or 4-1. Well, the most important thing is the makeup. We're, we're here working to build a championship roster one player at a time, and to build a championship roster, you have to have championship makeup and you have to have the right kind of culture. As you get to know uh, every one of these players, you know, it's, you try to figure out how they learn, what they're about, what makes them tick. Because at the end of the day, this is a relationship business between coach and player. And I understand how they learn best. And this is, so this is just a small part of it as you're building this, as you're building kind of the, the, the entire bio. So when we get down in late in April, we make the best decision. They know the makeup and how the kid's wired, how does he work, how does he grind, how does he respond to adversity, um, what type of person is he, teammate, you know, is it real, is it fake, is it fraudulent, you know, all those things that, that are so important of what we're trying to build here and it all starts, it all goes back to makeup, it all starts with makeup. The measurables and the statistics and all those things matter, it's all a part of the equation, but number one is always going to be the makeup. The further and further along in the process, the more and more you get to know the player, the closer and closer you get to the player. I think at this point, we know who he is as a football player. The combine and the pro day, they're kind of like icing on a cake. They're confirmations of his physical skill set and what he's capable of doing. The most important part of this process is getting to know the player at this point, the person, who the person is, um, you want to bring good people. You want to bring people that you know will work. You want to bring people who are going to be good representatives of the Atlanta Falcons. Um, I think this is the part where you really get to know the person, the person that you're bringing into the family. Guys, Pro Day, listen, Pro Day for a lot of scouts is even more important than the Combine because you get to touch and feel them. You get to put them through realistic drills that you're going to use on game day. College Pro Day is kind of that one of the last major checkpoints. So it gives you an opportunity to be comfortable in that environment, but it also gives scouts an opportunity to talk to your family, your friends, coaches, and that's really what the Pro Day is about. The Pro Day is about answering any lingering questions that you still might have about a player. We start going to the Pro Days and private workouts, and uh, this is a really important exposure because you get to get, get a good feel for these players and see how they're wired, who's football smart. All those exposures are, are really important. We are counting down now, literally. It's been months and then weeks, and now it is literally days and hours before we find out where this draft is gonna go. This is that keep your head down and grind mode. This is when you are pouring over information. Remember, the scouts have gone out and they've gone out and looked at players. They're looking at tape. You broke down pro days. You looked at what they did at the combine. So there's a lot of number crunching. There's a lot of film. There's a lot of where do we see these guys in our system? This time of year, obviously, optimism runs, runs uh, high here. And uh, we're excited because there's, there's unknown, there's excitement. Uh, it's the closest thing you're going to get until the season starts, a little bit of an adrenaline rush, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Five picks in the first 82 selections. You have an opportunity to draft five legitimate players who could either make an immediate impact and or contribute to the long-term prosperity of this roster. 
you have got fantastic players that have the chance of turning around the fortunes of an NFL team over three days of the NFL draft. And the teams that can do it great are the ones that have the most success. Atlanta, are you ready for the NFL draft? We get ready for tonight's big event. This draft is the big one for Terry Fontenot because I think this starts his clock. But we also get a chance to see our team change a little bit tonight. We get a chance to see what direction this team is going to now take. And there's so many options that we can go with tonight at, at eighth overall. There's so much work that's been done. And if you're disciplined, you've got a process, like you're going to feel calls, you know, guys trade around and you, you need to plan ahead. And if you don't, you don't want to get be a prisoner of the moment and overreact. And that's where I think a lot of mistakes are made. So you got to stay disciplined. There is an excitement, right? There's a clock winding down, but you got to trust your process and not overreact and just be a prisoner of the moment. You never know what's going to happen on draft day, especially when you're at eight. Uh, there are seven variables in front of you, um, and so you really don't know what's going to be there at eight. So we have to make sure we stack the players and we feel very good and very comfortable with what's going to be there. And we talk about this a lot, about how the, the person and the makeup is the most important thing for us. Once we were able to pull that magnet off the board, we we're really excited. Which one, Adam? Drake? Yes, sir. How you doing, man? Good, how are you? You want to be a Falcon? Yes, I've been wanting to go there ever since I met y'all. No doubt, man, no doubt, man. Look, we're excited about getting you here in the building, and we know the way you're going to go to work, and you're going to be a part of something special. All right, ma'am? Thank you, thank you. What they want to do with the eighth pick in the 2022 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Drake London, wide receiver, USC. They're going to play tall ball in Atlanta with Kyle Pitts and Drake London. That's a basketball team they're putting together there for Marcus Mariota. And obviously, there's a lot of guy-given talent there. He's also a, a very tough, competitive, smart. He fits all those characteristics and all the intangibles that he, he fits. He fits our ethos, and we knew that he'd be a great fit here. Hey, Kay. What's up? How you doing? How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. You want to be a Falcon? Hell yeah, I'm ready to go. You ready to come to Atlanta? I'm ready. Let's ready. do it. You, you ready to be a Falcon? Yes, sir. All right, man. I took this on because they don't know. I need to go by. Hey, hey, listen, everything happens for a reason, right? Hey, D'Angelo. How you doing, you ready? bro? You ready to roll? I can't wait, man. I'm ready. All right, man. You want to be a Falcon? No, I'd love that, coach. First down, second down, third down, and fourth down, all right? We're going to pick you right here if you want to be a Falcon. You want to be a Falcon? Yes, sir. If you just I'm through, I will let you down that power, Coach. We're fired up to have you, and congratulations. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. If you'd have told me these are the eight players that we've drafted, I would have wouldn't have believed you. I, I would have said there's there's no way they're the right eight for us. Um, again, not just because of all the talent that they have, but because of who they are as human beings. When you go all the way back from the beginning to now, if you'd have told me these are the guys we're getting, I wouldn't believe you and we just couldn't be more excited. What an incredible weekend it was for our Atlanta Falcons. From just an athletic wide receiver standpoint, what he can do, he's a really good player. Arnold Epicady from Penn State, who uh, if you look at the highlight reel, I mean, he's a one-man gang, Carl. He's all <laughs> over the place. I like the pick. I think he's explosive. He is a guy that rushes the pass. Troy Anderson brings that element. He's going to be able to come in and run around and make plays for you. I feel good about Ritter. They liked him from the start. We know what we're getting in Desmond Ritter. He played a lot of games at Cincinnati. He's a quarterback. He knows what he's doing. D'Angelo Malone, he's got a little bit of size on him, but he's a stud. The, the, the resume speaks for itself. Tyler Algier, mm -hmm. I love this pick. This guy runs so hard, Mike, and he's going to come in. He's going to compete. we got some dogs. Schaefer can plug in at guard. I like that. Fitzpatrick is a great pick for this team. He is a worker, dude. Talk to anybody at Georgia. They love him. They'll tell you this guy comes ready to work. I like this draft. I like what we did. I like the way they addressed all the needs and how that this thing filled out. We're taking one step at a time. We're thinking about today and everything that we have to do today to get better. We believe in that locker room. We're going to continue to add. We're going to continue to get better. And we're going to go out there and compete at every single thing we do. You should believe because we're going to focus on the process, focus on the details, and we're going to get better every day.